same place? It's, it's challenging. Good question. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, my name is Johnson Yeke from Liberia, West Africa. Yeah. And I'm actually, I've been in the Twin City for about maybe 15 years. Uh -huh. And I'm also a minister of the Tabernacle Faith Church in Champlain, Minnesota. Uh, my question here is that can prayer be considered the backbone of a small group? Yes. Yes, I mean, so you think you, well we have, so like I mentioned to you, we have a group that meets on Tuesday night that's, that's a prayer group. That's the main purpose for it. And, but that group's met for a long time and it's about six people. And I've tried to explain to them that it's, it's kind of hard for people to feel comfortable coming into that. So again, let's celebrate what's going on there. And people who have that passion, you know, God bless you, that's awesome. When you look at Acts, Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 4, they met together in homes, they, what did they do? They broke bread, they prayed, they listened to teaching, and they shared life together. I, I mean, I long for that. Um, I think a group can be a prayer-based group. I think there's probably going to be more than that going on, you know. But um, it, that can be the that can be the main purpose of that group coming together. Uh, and so you look at. I long for that church. Wouldn't it be great as a pastor if if everybody was in a group that met weekly, that came together and they prayed and were in the Word and were caring for each other and were loving and serving each other and and so when so and so has surgery in their small group, they're bringing them a meal and you're like. Man, that's going to work me out of a job as a pastor. That'd be awesome. It's not where we're at. It'd be great to be there. To let the body be the body. Because when small groups start going to look like acts, they start caring for each other and praying for each other. And, you know, that's a, that's, that's a beautiful model. Um, if we can get there, we've got so many other, other interesting dynamics there. Okay, so uh, let's see where we are in time. 25. Let me go, I want to go through this next, last two pages kind of quickly. This is, this uh, the last two pages, the checklist for holistic small groups. This is right out of natural church development. So if, if you take the natural church development survey and, and small groups is one of your low staves on the water barrel, then this is one of the things they ask you to do. They say, take this, you, and I, two years ago, I did this seminar, and people took this, what they told me, and they took it to the leaders, and they read through these questions, and they found a lot of benefit, and, and just, this is an evaluation tool, okay? So, that's kind of what this is. In your church, the significance of small group is regularly preached about. There's that first one. When is, when is it, is it coming from the pulpit? Is your pastor saying... If you preach about it and pray about it, it's important to you. Small group leaders receive appropriate training. I think we need to look at ourselves that way and say, you know, it takes some time, it takes a champion, it takes a team to do some training, but you know, I'm done, I'm guilty of it, maybe you are too, maybe you're better than me. I've, hey, would you lead a small group? Here's a DVD, go. I don't know if that's going to help them do well. Depends on them. Maybe they're a pastor, shepherd. Maybe they have gifts that are going to do that. But you know, can we train them and fit them into a plan? Uh, at least once a month, is there leading for small group training experiences? Who leads? I don't know. We don't do monthly. I mean, right now we're doing weekly training of our leaders. And when we get into the rest of the year, that's another question. Uh, here's one, and each group leader has recruited an apprentice. I think that's in our setting right now. We're looking at that at those table groups. Is there, I had that happen in my group. I'm leading a table group in this discussion format we have right now, and I had to be gone a week, and so there was someone in the group, and I said, hey, could you lead this? And, and they're like, you know, so that's my next target person is to say, you know, next time around, would that person be willing to lead a small group? I was looking for that. Um, Small group leaders have a supervisor coach who meets with them once a quarter to evaluate ministry. 
Uh, here's a question. Today, are there more groups than six months ago? And what kind of groups? Again, you know, try to measure things. That's a measurable goal. That's why I started today with just asking you how many and what kind. So if a year from now you were to reflect on this, how, how have you done? Have you made any progress? Group leaders are re regularly informed about growth and leadership resources. Uh, we've checked that each group leader leaders has the right gifts in his or her ministry. Um, in the natural church development material, all of those, those eight minimum factors don't stand alone. I mean, small groups is related to gifts, and gifts is related to empowering leaders, and so they, they do work together and they relate to each other, so they're not only standing alone. If you, and so that's kind of the, when you're raising one, you may be influencing the, needing the input from others, and that's where like the gifts, uh, spiritual gifts, do people know their gifts is related there. Um, the church leaders have overall view of the size of groups, um, when 12 or more participants are prepared, or are they ready to multiply, multiply? When's the last time you saw a group divide and, and start a church? You know, not start a church, but that can happen too. <laughs> that, that can happen too. Uh, but start, start another, you know, birth another group and celebrate that. Hey, this group's launching another group. And, uh, second page here. Se se several groups have already identified pioneers who'd be involved in starting new groups. You know, just praying and targeting those. Small groups are supported purposely by the leadership. We've investigated the needs of non-members which are not being yet met by existing groups. You know, um, you know, are the groups, we certainly want the groups to be biblically based and, and there's prayer involved in that and, and those sorts of things, but are, you know, back to this guy, is he gonna be plugged in? He didn't tell me one thing, but I'm not sure he's just sold on the material we're using right now either. So I'm not going to put time into it if I don't think it's going to benefit. And that's the reality of the thing is, you know. So with young, young couples or young uh, families, is the, is the material going to help them? I totally agree with Tim. We need to get down to the heart of... of pursuing and, and following Jesus and taking up our cross and following Him. Um, sometimes we need to not be tricky, but be re resourceful and say, well, okay, maybe you're going to step into a young families by doing a parenting group or a money group or a marriage topic. And that's the truth of the matter. Uh, we've investigated the needs of non-members, okay, we've created groups that will try to meet these needs, we've found ways to apply strengths of our church and develop small groups. We've identified barriers, um, you know, we tried to, with this format we're using now, we, we provide a daycare at the church and, and provide food and uh, it's, you know, again, we're not afraid to try something. I've I go, I teach so like in this format right now, I've been helping watch kids from 3 to 5 o'clock. You know, and then I'd stay for supper, and then I'd lead a group from the six to eight o'clock session, and we've asked other people to be involved in that. So, removing barriers for people. Um, the results of our measures for improvement are monitored regularly. You know, continuing to keep the conversation alive with your leadership, or if there's a team that oversees this. Steps we're taking are evaluated according to biotic <coughs> principles, and what that means is. That's what I said earlier, that small groups is related to um, other spiritual gifts. It's related to empowering leaders. It's related to, maybe it's related to need-oriented evangelism. You know, stepping into your community and having uh, things related there. Uh, we've set a date for a new church profile. And what that means is they have uh, natural church development you can take a, I've, we've taken it twice in Rozo now, you you have a survey you give to 30 people, doesn't matter the size of your church, and they fill it out, and it based on their answers, it's like getting the church physical. It tells you where you're healthy, it tells you where your low, low areas are. And these are 30 people that are 
involved in the ministry of the church. It, it would sure, certainly include leadership or just people involved in the ministry who can who can answer questions. The pastor answers questions on the survey, the profile, and the 30 people answer questions. Like I said, if your church is 3,000 or 35, it doesn't matter. You take this and you get feedback, and then there are strategic ways to address each of those things. And sometimes in the church, we don't know where to start. I found this to be a very, very helpful uh, thing to do. It costs about $135 to get the test, um, the inventory, but you get your results emailed to you and you have all this information and, and it's, it's pretty interesting. And that's why I've listed there. There's the resources I've talked about this morning. Natural Church Development, you can find more information online at churchsmart.com. Saddleback has the two websites, smallgroups.net.org. And Christianity Today has the smallgroups.com. All three of those websites are, I found, very helpful. I was uh, meeting with the deacons and, and team that oversees these. I, I see an article that says, you know, evaluating your small groups or being purposeful with your small group, you know, emailing that or reading that or sharing that with people who are involved. So those are some resources uh, for you to consider. Now, um, I've blown through that. I, I think I've tried to explain you're here because you understand the value and the importance of that, where you are, where you'd like to get, maybe giving you some tools and some thoughts about understanding that and taking steps in a direction. Somebody else have a question about your setting or a comment about the content that we've gone over this morning? When yes. you're talking about trying to get to your 100% participation, are you looking at, you know, right now you're trying to do it with focus of two sure. weeks, but 